what are we discussing today? Ooh. Well, can I suggest something? Yeah, of course. The art of saying no. Subhanallah, I was thinking about this yesterday. Oh, well, Wallahi. <laughs> Why? Because it's it's I feel like this is the kind of time when like divine. Are you crying? I see a tear. <laughs> we haven't started. I know. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Because it's like divine intervention really makes a lot of sense because I had an incident this weekend where learning to say no a bit more clearly should have been my objective. Oh. Yeah. So subhanAllah, I was thinking about this yesterday because I remember when I was on the Hikmat podcast, there was something that I wanted to say and I remember thinking it's in the moment and then we got distracted and it went away and the second I left the studio, I remembered what I wanted to say. And I was thinking about that last night and it was the art of saying no because something my dad taught me at a very young age was what is the value of your yes if you say yes to everything, if you're unable to say no. And that really stuck with me. Right? That's what you said. Exactly. To the point. Because... I think people pleasing fell was something that I f- an umbrella that I fell under when I was younger wanting to be all? No most not everyone of us, most of us we seek the approval of others that's why we say yes I I agree but but there are uh, there are some kids who swam against the current and they're quite remarkable you know very few they're literally that diamond in a mine of coal and as a people pleaser when I was younger I wanted to say yes to everyone. I, it was almost on autopilot. You say yes without thinking, right? Yeah. And you think it's what you want. You almost lie to yourself and convince yourself that this is what you want and this is what will make you happy. And then obviously, lo and behold, here come the consequences of my actions. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm surprised that I'm actually not happy. I'm actually around the wrong people or been taken advantage of or 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 and then my dad once sat me down and he's like if you say yes to everything if you say yes to everyone in your mother to every tom dick and harry what is that your yes worth you're unable to say no okay. so your yes is worth nothing does that make sense yeah now tell me so it's interesting i'm saying the the very clear in line between yes and no right it's a yes and it's a no Mm. but you were saying saying no more clearly which Mm. is i think something a lot of people fall victim to they think that they've mustered the courage to say no and then they find themselves not really saying no do you know what i mean it's kind of it's the gray zones yeah the gray zones because what happened was instead of saying no um i said something along the lines of i don't want this and Okay. But still somehow, even though there was a clear rejection of the idea, it was it didn't translate. It was miscommunicated. Okay. So that brings me actually, you know what? Can I I'm gonna open this because I saw this yesterday and it made a lot of sense to me. Bismillah, where is she? Uh one of my beautiful newest talents Mira Sara's bestie I saw on her story she posted I used to think communication was the key until I realized comprehension is you can communicate all you want with someone but if they don't understand you it's silent chaos and I thought that was very beautiful because it took me in on a little bit of a in a little bit of a rabbit hole in my mind because comprehension I understood it to mean multiple things in this case they truly just do not have the ability to understand you or they are deliberately refusing to understand you right Mm. because you can in your case I'm thinking if you clearly said I don't want this I can't imagine the person just being so oblivious to what I don't want this means. Mm. That sounds to me more like they deliberately went out of their way to completely disregard what you said. And they don't, they're refusing to comprehend. It's an intentional Mm -hmm. unwillingness to understand you. That's true. So no matter how hard you, how fair enough or how well you communicate, then how do you, even then, you can't control other people's comprehension. Like, if they're refusing to comprehend what you're communicating, what you're putting down, isn't that a loss of control in that situation? It's actually, I think it's an opportunity for you to control the circles you remain in. 
you yeah. yes, I fully agree that you cannot control other people's behaviors and actions, but you can put fully control the rooms you enter, the people you allow into your life, the access that they have to you. And that's an opportunity for you to set boundaries and be disciplined and remove yourself from that situation. Okay. So instead of looking at it as, oh, I can't control what other people do, I look at it as, oh, that's an opportunity for me to show myself my own strength. And You know, turkeys and geese are communicating all the time. <laughs> what? <laughs> Baba, I mean, a bit more explanation. Turkeys and geese are communicating all the time. Do they, they communicate? Pro- yes, they're okay. producing noise. They're communicating. Okay. But most of us fall in that tra- trap. We communicate like turkeys and geese. No comprehension. So with turkeys and geese, it's they literally can't comprehend each other? Is that what you're saying? They send messages. They do. Geese, but there is no comprehension. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, but so that's what I'm saying. Do you think it? I think personally, it's reached a point where it's a deliberate form of refusing to communicate and comprehend. It's an insult to one's brain to communicate with people who does not have comprehension. Yes. Also, stop talking to people who don't who refuse to understand or value what you say. It is an insult. I fully agree. And that's yeah. where the power of the no comes. Just no. Yeah. Because regardless of how much the person in front of you lack comprehension, he understands no. Yeah. Yeah, like I look at my little Jaggery Do, and if I just say no, she's 47 days old. Mm. My little kid, my little brown baby. If I just go no, she'll, and then she'll look at me. <laughs> but she gets it. She you understands, know? Yeah. Romulus, he'll, he's a little dictator, that one. And he can do whatever but the second i say i could say anything stop he doesn't get it if i say no he just gets it so if little kittens can understand it a grown ass people believe mm. me they know what the word no means fair enough and whenever there is communication there has to be gaps of silence and where somebody talks and the other actually listens and you could sen- you could you could sense that there is a sen- there is a pondering and reflection on what's being said otherwise it turns into a turkey communication you throw uh, a sentence i throw one and we just keep on shooting at each other like firecrackers yes, i agree yes, yes. And, and and nobody not to reference jordan peterson oh please reference him i i used to love him but after his stance on Palestine, I just, I refuse to acknowledge him. That being said, I do like George Janko. Remember, I mentioned mm. this last time. He's a Christian podcaster. And I just, I love watching his journey. It's been very, very interesting. And he's done a great time, a great um, podcast series so far. And then he had Jordan Peterson on and he completely fumbled uh, just in the way that he was communicating. That's a different story. So I just watched a clip from that. Uh, podcast series and they were talking about can a wife or a husband win an argument with his wife or his or her husband and yeah so he said something really interesting and he said why would you want to so I'm going to pause that and come back to it I had recently experienced where I was having a verbal disagreement with someone we were in a discussion and we were completely disagreeing that being said I have to preface this by saying I am the stronger communicator. I have a way with my words where I can, you know, shut someone down immediately or they'll be just like, uh, uh, and not know what to say. And obviously, I try to be self-aware enough where I know that can get to my head and I can be a little egotistical and know that I'm about to win this argument, which is a horrible way to be sometimes. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you have to be cautious. And before even watching that podcast, I being self-aware and trying to always better myself i took a step back and i was like try to help her win this one she has words she's just not being able to put them together help her win her argument so i helped her win her argument in some ways Mm -hmm. where i gave her the words she could not find all right Mm -hmm. so back to that george janko podcast and he said sometimes one person will be better with words and most likely they will win the argument even when they are wrong at times because you're better with words it's easier right Mm -hmm. and he said help your partner find their words because maybe they have a point so that's what and before even watching that Mm -hmm. i took a step back and i was like maybe 
maybe she has a point. Maybe there's really something mm. she's trying to say that I'm completely disregarding because I'm still human. I still have an ego. Mm. And subhanAllah, I saw it in that podcast. And that's where communication, concept of communication collapses is when the other party does not have an interest in your point. Just yeah. has mm. an interest in winning. Watch it. Most of the time, people have no interest in your point. Uh, you know when you know? It's when you see they have their answer ready before you finished your sentence. Yeah. And I see it all the time because I've obviously I've fall victim to it and I've been the person to, to do so. My advice Whereas, always is to allow the other person to win. Give him the pleasure of, of thinking that he... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But wouldn't that give that person unrequited power? Oh, yeah, it's going to hang him someday. <laughs> but again, power over who and what? If you, this is where, I say this all the time, but I'll be very disciplined and strict and don't get it confused. They don't have the power unless you give it to them. If you remove yourself from their lives and they don't have access to you, power over they who? Have, they have the they delusion. Can, of power. The delusion of power. And they mm. can go hit their head against these four walls until the end of days, they can't have access to you. They have no power over you. They might feel like huffed and puffed and ha, huh, I showed her I won that argument. But you're gone. You're mm. moving on, doing better. And they're just, like my dad said, in that delusion of I showed her, I won that argument. Who cares? Mm. Who cares? Fair enough. I like how these sessions turn into therapy sessions for me. I think the art of no falls into a lot of different things because it yeah. falls into no can be so many things. So I don't just take it into the external, literally verbally saying no to someone. I think in your case, like the, what you were saying about unrequited power, that internal no of just sitting between you and yourself and saying no. They won't have access to me anymore. No, I won't be in these circles anymore. No, I refuse to expose myself to such abuse anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? Fair. It is important to know your list of no's before you know your list of yes. Your oh. deal breakers matter more than anything. And before people lose their minds, I'm not talking about relationship deal breakers. Mm. I'm talking about your internal deal breakers, deal breakers. the what you'll allow to have access into your life and what you wouldn't mm -hmm. in terms of anything in terms of the way people treat you in terms of what you spend your time on because some people they'll scroll on tiktok or instagram all day long you know that to me is a deal breaker between myself and i absolutely not you will not waste hours of your day mindlessly scrolling mm. through an app you know what i mean so it's those kinds of deal breakers fair enough so then Okay, now coming back to saying no, right? Sometimes saying yes does help people. Remember we were talking about this. Drowning yourself to yeah. save someone else, yeah. Yeah, drowning yourself to save somebody else. But even then, how, how, do, you, like, how do you assess the consequences to any action that you were saying yes or no to? I think it goes back to the gut feeling video we did. You you know, subhanAllah, I was watching yesterday. I don't remember what the video was, but I went through the comments and there were doctors in the comments going like, I trust my gut feelings sometimes more than my actual medical training and it saved lives countless times. I will never ignore my gut feeling. And we explained this in a video before. Your gut feeling is that first thought that you have that mm -hmm. comes with extreme clarity. Yes, no, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. Everything that comes after, so for example, in this situation, you could have immediately known no, right? Mm. But then machine gun thoughts. Haram, maybe it'll help them. Don't be a bitch. Be mm. nice. Be agreeable. Like, you know, don't project your insecurities on someone else. Oh, they're mm -hmm. just asking for a small favor, you know? And mm. then all those little trickly, prickly thoughts yeah. come and convince you to do the absolute opposite of what your gut feeling told you without a shadow of a doubt. Fair. So I think that's how you assess. Mm. See, the no should start with the list of no's you put on yourself. What is it that you do not allow yourself? What is it that you, s you, you must say no to yourself with? It's, it's a long list, by the way. Yeah. And if you master this, it becomes easier to you to say no to the outer circle around you. And, and this no is, n is not just a negation of approaches or negation of, 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 of communication or negation of, gif of gift and bliss. It is actually a resorting and arrangement of priorities in your life. 
I love that. It's reminding me, I'm just going to add to it a little bit of, uh, I think I mentioned this last time, that quote that I saw on Instagram. Don't allow your loyalty to keep you in situations your common sense would have gotten you out of a long time ago. That's slavery, not loyalty. People, again, yeah. we've t- I've talked about this. People, it's the masked virtue of they convince themselves that it's loyalty. But in people's minds, it's loyalty. I'm being loyal or I'm being a good friend or I'm being so whatever. Loyalty masked a, or sorry, um, slavery, all of those things masked as loyalty. It doesn't matter. People tell themselves, oh, it's just that I'm loyal, please. <laughs> mm. You know, but that's a that's a really good one because if you think about it your common sense is needs to be objective it has nothing to yeah. do with your feelings and it has nothing to do with the other person's feelings right mm-hmm. because and the best way i view it is i always ask if someone came to me with this situation it, it's the situation i'm going through i'll think if nitu came to me and said wahat nin talata is what i'm going through i'd literally look at her like what are you doing you know better i know you know better You know, so when I say it like that objectively, I look, I look at myself and what excuse do you have to give to yourself? What? You're mm. weak, you're loyal, you're kind, you're nice. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean? Honestly, I really want someone to break this down to me, for me. Mm. What does it mean when you are nice to everyone and their mother, but not to yourself? Then you're not nice. Then you're not nice. I, I just don't understand the point. Fair, yeah. You know, mm. this this whole act of self-sacrificing to make other people happy and not being able to say no to them. But <laughs> effectively, you are saying no to kindness to yourself. You are mm. saying no to self-discipline to yourself. You are saying no to boundaries to yourself. You know how important it is to say no and continuously to children? Oh, we talked about this last time. Yeah, yeah. Last, no. last, last time. No to say... Say no to children? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we said this. Yeah, yeah, of course. We talked about it, yeah. No, 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 no. And that's, it teaches them boundaries. It, it keeps them away from harm. It you know, reinforces morals, reinforces uh, resilience. If it's, mm. if it's that beneficial to children, then it's beneficial to the, to the rest of society, actually. People will walk all over you if you don't say no to them. Yeah. They will walk all over you because it is human nature and this is where I get very specific with it especially when I see a lot of those comments come in and it, I'll know they have absolute zero no self-awareness whatsoever because the example that I gave now when I was having an argument with a friend before I even watched the George Janko and Jordan Peterson podcast I really had that aha moment of maybe help her find her words you know And because I, I clocked myself on, yo, I'm not a saint. I have an ego. I can absolutely misbehave. Of course. Mm. Of course. And a lot of people say, yeah, subhanallah. And my dad and I talk about this all the time. If I ever do a video like the one about the villain, mm. everyone relates. Everyone yeah. relates that they've been done dirty. And everyone relates that they've been trampled all over. And everyone relates that they've been abused by a narcissist. But no one relates to ever being the narcissist themselves. No one. But guess what? Every single one of you has been a narcissist at some point in time. It is an impossibility. How else do you learn? You have wronged people. Mm-hmm. You must have. It is impossible not to. But then everyone sits on their high horse of, no, I've been on the inflicting and inflicted, sorry, end of inflicted, it. Never yeah. on the inflicting end. Bupkis. No way. Mm. I'm calling bullshit right now. Mm. It's just an impossibility. So what I wanted to say was, wait, we were saying something. What was the point of this? There was a point. Wow, we really got into it. Daddy, there was a point. Bismillah. Ah, people will walk all over yeah. you, right? So honestly, think about it. If you had someone in your life Mm. who never said no, who always did whatever you wanted, who, you know, it means it's almost in despite of you, in spite of you, you kind of take them for granted. Mm. You, that's why we set boundaries, because it's human. You can't possibly tell me, and I know people will say this, that no, I would never take advantage. Not me, not I. <laughs> no, but you would, because it's human nature, and you are not the exception to human nature. Any seasoned man will tell you the shortest way to lose a woman is to say yes to her all the time. And you yes, shouldn't. 
Yes to whom? What did you say? Yes to her. Oh. Uh, he said any seasoned man will tell you the for best, the fastest way. I don't remember what he said. To lose a woman is to say yes to her all the time. Ah, you shouldn't yes say yes to a woman all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. And you shouldn't say yes to a man all the time. And to children. That's that's the, yeah. If you want to ruin a woman, or just to, say yes to her. Or to your colleagues, or to your employees, or to your friends. Mafi ishi ismo. There is no such thing as yes all the time. Mm. Most it's, of the time. Even. even most of the time. You will lose. Yeah. Okay, but then let's let's figure out this. There are people who have um, be, like in the, within their circles, just people who are emotionally abusive, right? Okay. Now it could be anybody. It could be your mother. You, they wouldn't even know your that best friend. Your whatever, anybody. Yeah. They could okay. be like they wouldn't even know they're being emotionally abusive. Okay. Right. The person abusing isn't aware that they're being abusive. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but that's that's the thing. That's okay. the thing because th- think about it. Like now, let's say it come a they very are sim- always aware of it. Thank you. <laughs> you saw the smile on my face. I was like, I'm gonna no, let her finish. Let, let me say, let me say this right now. It it comes down to like let a simple example. Like if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna do something and my mom asked me to do something else. But like, no, I will have task one to do, and then I'll get to task two. And then my mom is gonna say something like, oh, it's because you don't really care or love or do this, this, this. Okay. I'm just like, why are you bringing that into the situation? Okay. Like I'm currently focused on task A. Task B is not like, but like, and then when we when I call her out on it, she'll be like, no, I was, I was being da, 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 da. But like, you do, get what I'm trying to say. Okay, but I just so I fully understand what you're saying, you're saying the art of saying no is in the sense that you told her, no, I'm going to finish task number one and then get to what you asked me to do. Yeah. Okay. Um. (laughs) Well, that's still saying yes, I guess, but it's a long way, but it's No, it's fine. It's a very respectful yes, but it's I'm going to finish what I have in my hand right now and then I'm going to get to what you asked of me, especially if it's not urgent or life or death. I understand. I'm... (laughs) The most... I'm going to let my dad take this one. The most subtle manipulation is the one that happens between parents and their children. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I, I watched it all the time. I watched it in my family. I watched it in other families. And let me tell you, not, I could say women can be very manipulative with their children, but in reality, even fathers can be very Absolutely. manipulative with their children. It's just that women have a very unique, exquisite way of doing it. And, and it's always the, gu- the, gu- the guilt trapping. I was about to say mm. the emotional manipulation. We're great at it. We're mm. so good at it. <laughs> Emotional blackmail. Yeah. I really, this year, even though how much I've seen from women, this year specifically, I have seen how powerful women are with emotionally blackmailing people. And they should be. You are very emotional creatures. That's that's part of your arsenal. That's part of what you've been arsenal. equipped with. Mm. But why would you, why abuse that power? That's that's not the question you should ask. The mm. question is how to deal with those who are abused because the abuse will happen all the time. Exactly. Oh. And like you said, you can't control what they do, even if it is your own mother. You can't. See, one of the things I taught my children, especially Layla, don't waste time trying to change people to fit your narrative. <sighs> Be aware of what people do and maintain your narrative. It's easy. It's easy when you know you, know, you see a hole. You just you need to maneuver around it and not not just w- drive into it. But you don't just stop there and try to f- fix the hole and cement it and flatten it and move to to the next. No, you ca- you cannot do that. You might mm. do it once or twice because the hole is just in front of your door. But you cannot do that on general, on, on, mm. on a universal Every scale. Every hole that you see, yeah. I'll you need to, to recognize that. a hole when you see one. That's all. Absolutely. I'll add to that. Bismillah, what did I want to say? The number one way to absolutely lose yourself, especially when it comes to your same-sex parents and that dynamic, is to n- have an emotional attachment to the abuse and trauma that they have imposed upon you you immediately become them in the future. If you have an emotional attachment to the trauma that your parents have put you through, it is inevitable. You will lock yourself in a cycle and you will become them. And that's exactly what I used to tell you when you were young. Do you hear what she just said? It's her worst fear. Don't let the cycle close. Exactly. You, did you hear what she just said? It is her worst fear. And that's, of course it is, because we a lot, we all have that. I'm going to say it without exception. Truly, most people have a... I'm not going to say we all. There's some people who have great parents. Most people have this fear of 
my fears to turn into my mother or my fears to turn into my father, right? And the people who usually have that fear and you can see it in their eyes and you can see it in the way they behave and you can see it in the way the dynamic is between them and that parent. Nine times out of 10, they turn into that parent. The more you hate your parents, the more you criticize them, the more you blame them, the more you become them. The more you react to what they do as well, add that. The more you react to what they do, the more you become them. Yes. It's when you get this separation. That's why I said emotional attachment. I use that word very specifically because everything you said had to do with being emotionally attached to it. Absolutely. The, b- b- by saying no, you create this, this d- d- detachment. Mm-hmm. By saying no and not reacting to their reaction of yes. your no, just say no. Oh, and not before saying no to them out loud, say no inside mm. of no, I just خلص, I will separate. That is a human. I am a human. Mm. And I'm separating her actions from my worth, my value, because I think it has a lot, especially with mothers and daughters. Yeah. It has a lot to do with self-worth and self-value and self-love. Yeah. So you need to separate. Because mm-hmm. we talked about this last time, from garnering your self-worth and validation, from ex- your self-worth and love from external validation, that includes your parents. Fair. And for Fair. God's sake, stop trying to change everybody, especially those around you. Change yourself. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going to reference Jordan Peterson again. He's yeah. getting he's getting a lot of, not that he needs my shout outs, but he was doing a show in Australia, I believe it was, and there was a live audience and people were vicious with him, vicious. And there was a girl in the audience and I'm not politically correct, so I'm just going to say it. she was fat and ugly and she looked angry and she looked very miserable and unhappy. Like I can't imagine being seated even next to her in that audience. That's how it translated over the footage. And I believe the context of the video was he was saying something along the lines of stop attaching your your life to causes like like uh, global warming. He said different types of causes. He's like, stop attaching your entire life to these causes. If everyone did the internal work of like he said, stop trying to, you said fix, uh, other people fix yourself. Mm -hmm. If everyone did that, no one would need to be fixed. So there wouldn't be any problems. There wouldn't be any issues. There wouldn't be any traumas and abuses and and, and all of wars and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And she, she should have seen her. She was so angry and no. And she was like, she was, if she could, Wallahi, if it was the purge, she would have gotten up and killed him. If she could, like you could see death in her eyes. Mm. But I agree with what he said. Stop trying externally. If this was applied, think about it. Honestly, take a minute and think about it. If this was applied to every soul in the world, where enough of external fixing and just fix what is inside, internal Bob the Builder, Mm. no one would need fixing. See that which triggers you and for sure, you have it within you. So if I was triggered by this Australian fat fuck, <laughs> I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna cut this out. Uh, then you, 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 you must have something in common with her. I mean. Well, I wasn't triggered. I think I saw. I saw her for what she was. That's different. Yeah. Okay, but then again, now, now let's get into this. Um, if you know that you need to, you need to look inwards, and that's the only thing you can control, and that's the only thing you can fix. How do you know where to begin without seeking? Some don't, people need don't, external don't, don't help to just begin to it. search within. Don't complicate this. Wait, this actually, I agree with what she said. I understand the external help because there's a lot. And I came to you once with this. I've done everything I could. This last thing, no matter how much I've tackled it, molded it, bent it, tried, came from this angle, that angle, up, down, I could not shake it off of me. Mm. And I seeked external help. Once fixed it, moved on as a better version of myself. External help is okay. Mm. The kind of external help and for how long. So I, again, we're going to go into therapy, but to me, I would rather have a mentor like my father Mm. or one of my Sufi sheikhs who just gives it to me straight and I move on about my day. So the kind of external help that you look for Mm. makes the world of a difference. Because remember the example I gave of my ex-friend who was seeing a therapist because she's extremely introverted, ADHD, social anxiety. Mm. And all her therapist told her was, oh, you're going to have anxiety until the day you die. We're just going to learn to live with it. What? What? (laughs) You know, I would rather like that's 
th- that therapist should be stripped of her license and put yeah, in, yeah. In, in on an electric don't, chair, don't jail say, time. Don't say mm. that. They will all be angry with you. Oh, they can be angry, Dad. I don't care. <laughs> no, I mean, like, there, there I, two I sides to this point. I resolved it between myself after that Hikmat video. I resolved, resolved it truly. I've Y'all can sarcastic. say whatever you want. I've been sarcastic. You can say, I, I cannot. You know why? I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to take the time to say this. I would rather truly, with my God, go through the darkest of times in the most graceful of ways mm. than aspire to the delusional, impossible dream of always being happy or always being validated. I would put me through hell, but I know I have God with me. I'll take that any day. But do not give me the delusional dream of I just want to be happy or validate my feelings. Mm. I'm so traumatized. I get triggered. Never. Never. Give me God any day of the week. Fair. But then again, like, see, for me personally, it, I think the approach to, like, since we're just, since you mentioned therapy, the approach to therapy was a little bit more different because having studied psychology and having done that. Do you know the history of psychology? I don't remember it, but, but well, like, it started knew, from philosophy and then no, it came. No, uh-uh. If you knew it, you'd remember it. Do you know how Sigmund Freud, Freud came yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Do you know why he he started looking into therapy and how people's minds works? Do you no, know why? Not really. Because his best friends were pedophiles. And he was trying uh. to justify why they behave the way they do. Not, not find a solution or a cure, justify. If yeah. you know the history of psychology, mm. and that's why I get this, so this, angry this about you it. Cut. This you cannot. Okay, I will mm. cut it. But this is why I get so angry about it because people throw it all over. But if you knew the history the way I do, you mm. wouldn't, you would never agree to it. You would yes. never. Yes. You know, but then again, see, my, what I'm trying to come to is the fact that there have been, there have been good and bad cases. Of what? Of successfully being therapized. What's successful to you? Of being able to move on from Okay, now let's say I was a victim, and then to be then it switched to me being um, blamed for the situation, and then crumbling into myself to ch- just help change that narrative. Okay, listen. Long story short, if it does help break those chains of being a victim and enslaved to a trauma or whatever, and equips you to take back control of that narrative and set you out into the wild, wild west to be the best version of yourself, and you don't need to go back every Wednesday for an hour to cry. Hell yes. That's, that's okay. what I'm trying to say. Those yeah. few successful, very few successful cases, mm. I'm with you. Mm. Okay? Only those. <laughs> only those. But only no, I in get cases. What you're saying. I get what you're saying. But only in from. cases of extreme trauma. Th- why I was. Why I stand by what I said is most people go to therapy now because, oh, my exams took an emotional toll on me. I can't sleep. Oh, my boss was too mean to me and it. And I cried, and I can't wake up anymore to go to work. So now I see a therapist once a week, bro. Over faked vulnerability. Bro, you know. life is tough. Mm. Get it done. You're not the first person to have a crappy boss, and you're not the last. Yeah. Keep it moving. <laughs> This is where what you said kind of rings in my head. Like, if God didn't think you had the power to deal with what you had, like, you know what you've been through. I forgot what you I forgot the end. Like Allah Allah and Afsan Allah was God yeah. does not give us so more than it can bear. So yes. everything you've been through, God gave you all the tools you need to get through that. Not only get through it barely within an inch of your life. Truly, if you choose to look at it that way, if you choose to tap into it, get through it with the most grace, love, positivity, and blessings you could not even dream of. I have to emphasize this. Yes. No. Why is it in? such cultures that survival is a major issue like the natives in many of those places in Africa or so the hunters and there is nothing called psychological issues there is nothing called depression there is nothing called because it's all about the it's all about sur- your survival is being challenged on daily basis It's actually a sign of luxury. It's actually a sign of... It's very privileged. Yeah, it's a privileged state of societies that produces such... Incredible. Can I go off on that? I was having dinner with my friend, one of my really, really good friends, Ranwa. Um, a few days after my birthday, she took me out to dinner. We went to Mama Ish. Mm. Shout out to my Palestinian businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and I we were Mama sitting... Ish, by the way. I love Mama Ish. 
so we were sitting and having dinner and we were talking and uh, we really went deep into a lot of topics kind mm. of like this. And we referenced that video and that state of privilege to mm. how people react. And no, we're not Dalu'een. Oh, says the Dalu'a fighting in a comment section. I, <laughs> make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense, but okay. Anyway, she was saying that there was a time where, so Ran was very into cycling and hiking and she's very active like that. And she was, if I don't want to butcher this, cycling from Vietnam to Cambodia or Cambodia to Vietnam. And obviously they go through all the different parts of, mm. and it's not the the five star hotel parts, like she's not cycling through the four seasons, mm-hmm. right? And she said they were cycling at some point and she saw a bunch of kids playing with what seemed to be just stalls or stools made out of bamboo or wood or something of the sort. And they're playing in the mud and they're smiling from ear to ear. Mind you, these are people that are in rags. They're Mm. in some of the poorest areas of these places. And she said you could see the termites and insects crawling over them. But they were just happy and and free, free, just Mm. happy. So please just take a minute to process what I just said. The people losing their minds in my comments... You don't think it's privileged? You don't think it's privileged that you get to cry to a therapist once a week when there are people that are literally dying? You don't think it's privileged? I think it's about like it's about like really broadening your perspective. What you're trying like it, No, it's about humbling yourself. Can I be honest? Humble yourself. yourself. I'm not going to be nice about it. Humble yourself. Okay. There are people that are dying. Mm. There are people that do not have $2 a month to survive off of as a family. There are people that literally starve to death. And you have the audacity to sit here and say, "Oh, we're not spoiled. We just are emotionally aware." No, you're not. Mm. No, you're who are you lying to? Honestly, at this point I'm going to answer my question. You're lying to yourself and I have no problem mm. with that. You can go sit and lie to yourself. Go do that. It's ridiculous. Okay. That they want to fight me over, over the fact that you're Dalu'in. Fi nas am bitmut. There are people that are dying. And then you have the audacity to fight me over a therapist that you see once a week because something triggered you. And of course, people go into the extreme cases of, but people who were traumatized and abused. And I stand by what I said. If your trauma and your abuse does not make you a better version of yourself, if you cannot take it and harness it and turn it into something good, and like my father said, an arsenal to Mm. help you not only be better in this world, but master this world because you understand human psychology at a different level, then it's, then what's the point? Then I agree. What's the point? Yeah. Do you know that children that are exposed to severe trauma and children that are exposed to abundance of luxury, luxury spoiled, spoiled privilege, spoiled, yeah. yeah, they almost react the same way and have the same mental psychology. It's true. Because abundance and spoiling is a trauma. It is. My tummy is rumbling. Huh. So wh- where, where is the healthy be- state of existence? Wait, Baba, explain that. How is abundance trauma? Oh, baby girl. <laughs> Boiled people. People who never have to work a day in their life. Okay, but... Yeah, yeah. He's talking about... the two. Uh, he said two extremes. Mm. The extremely spoiled golden spoon in their mouth yeah, uh, 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 and then uh. the extremely traumatized and abused and and so the two opposite ends of it like the extremes mm. I, yeah. okay fair yeah okay one of one of the worst traumas you can inflict on a child is over spoiling of course yeah, fair. and you don't have to be that rich or extremely rich no you to don't spoil a child mm. you Absolutely. just have to say yes to him whatever whatever he does to create a monster out of a child just just Yes, I I will add though being extremely rich would make that would even make worse. It, it exacerbates yeah. it because you can say yes to your child all the time, but not have the funds to necessarily bestow upon them everything that they want. But then you can be really rich and and literally give them everything they ask for. And, those and then are you just traumatize them for life. Yeah. So wh- where is the soft point? Where is the sweet spot? The sweet spot is trauma is an essential part of our life. We need it. The way we need those moments and episodes and yeah. times where we get pampered and spoiled. We need both. This is what I said in my video. I said, "Ma fi hada ma shaf in jum al-lil b'az al-dhuhr." It's a saying in Arabic, which basically means there isn't anyone who hasn't seen hard times or bad days mm. or traumas. Trauma and trauma bifrit. I'm with you. 
trauma, traumas differ. Mine could be worse than yours, yours could be worse than mine, whatever, right? That being said, what I, this is why I stand by what I said, because it remains true despite your level of trauma and despite your emotional attachment to it. Because how come there are extreme abuse victims who have survived and come off better than they ever could have? They took it, like I said, and harnessed it and turned it into something beautiful. And then there are some who become drug addicts or commit suicide or, or, or. The, there is a reason for that and it's how, what they choose to do with it and before people co- actually come for me I really don't care I'm saying they can't control it absolutely not and this is where we are fundamentally different you can control anything with your mind when it comes to your mind you mm. have the power to change anything to change the lens from which you view it to change how it affects you it is absolutely 1000% within your control Does it take time? Yes. Yes, it does. Is it painful? Yes. Does it almost feel like you are stripping yourself naked? Yes. But guess what? It's still possible. I rest my case. We have an ayah that says, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا Yeah. Uh, With every hardship comes ease. Yes. And that's, and that's the duality of life. So trauma, abuse, whatever, bad fa- parents, bad partners, bad working uh, uh, Colleague? Affiliates, colleagues, or Anything. whatever. It's, it's, it's part of the usr. Yeah. And the usr is those... Faraj. The, the, the faraj that come and do... Sp- If people really understood what in the ma'al usr yusr meant, I swear they would be ashamed. Would it translate that? In the ma'al usr yusr means with every hardship comes ease. Okay. And if people truly, truly, truly understood what that meant, they would be ashamed to ever doubt what God has put them through. They would embrace hardships with all the love because it's the yusur that is divine. It's God's yusur that's coming. So he promised you with every hardship there is ease. So it's his ease that's coming to you. And if you really understood what that meant, you would embrace hardship because you know his ease is coming right after it. So no, I will. I do not have empathy or sympathy to the people losing their minds in the comments. I don't. I actually pity you. I feel sorry for you because you don't understand the value of what God is putting you through. Then again, it's it's like now I'm just picking out a few from the crowd of the people in the comments. Right? Oh, go for it. My favorite part. <laughs> Are we addressing we're comments? Having, yeah, we're, we're talking about those who have severe victim mindset. Yes, okay. Yeah. Now, they're going to sit and think that Their hardships are forever. They're not like seeing greener pastures. Okay. And then they start like sitting and blaming. And then, you know, they blame the causes. They they want they want to find reason. They think everything is out of their control. All of this, all of it, they shrivel. Okay. And when they, what comes out is something that is just so hateful. And then they think that they might be better to just speak up. But then again, it's just like this alternative perspective of your it's not a better perspective it's just slightly worse than what you, their perspective yeah their pers- no their perspective right but see when people come at you at the comments mm-hmm. like it's i think some of it is just their own insecurities just manifesting of course so it is of course. right and all of that is also some of them are some of them are proper victims who feel like you know what you're saying actually is beneficial but then there are some people who are getting triggered and then they want to sit there and call call themselves victims yeah <laughs> and i'm just like what do you mean make it make sense to me like oh. there are people who are actually out there so now the people who want to make themselves victims based on the things that you're saying because you they might like just because they took offense okay right Now we're talking about like their intelligence, everything, their comprehensions, everything. Okay. Like let, now let's say, let's pick out the women who do this, right? Okay. Now, now remember you talked about, so in the, the, I forgot the guy's name already, but in the audience there was this fat and, you said yeah, fat yeah, and ugly Yeah, yeah, Jordan Peterson, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 this fat and ugly woman. Now let's say. She could actually be really cute, but she just really looked ugly in that moment. She uglified herself with the energy that she was. She had on her. Yes. Right? Now. If you're saying that to clear, you're saying that now, but if that part of the video just went out. Oh, I don't but, care. 
Uh, yeah, but that no, my, here's my point. People are going to come at you regardless because they're like, you're fat shaming, this, I that, you're care. not body positive, this, that. I don't care. Yeah. I cannot explain to you how much I don't care. Because you know what? The best thing my mother did for me when I gained 15 kilos was look at me and go like, I don't like fat people, lose weight. It's the best thing she did for me. You know, I'm fat. My dad is fat. He's and I, obese. And I've never like find an excuse for it's a state that needs to be handled. It's not a welcomed state of existence. Mm. And, 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 and it's not a normal state of existence. Mm. It's abnormal. The 15 kilos that I gained, and it took me f- years to, to shed it, it affected me psychologically. Mm. I was depressed. It's, my knees hurt. I couldn't walk without feeling out of breath. Mm. My sleep was disturbed. The way I ate was horrible. It affected every single aspect of my life and then you want me to turn around and validate that at least am i am i crazy least, mm. <laughs> have i lost call my wrong, mind wrong mm. call maybe, wrong wrong Love maybe you yeah can, you, maybe you cannot overcome it at this moment fine and will but uh, in your mind and in your heart it's it's a clear it's a clear wrong mm. now i heard i read an article and it said something about there's the obese gene and there are some people that even if they lose weight and this is something my dad struggled with that it fluctuates and mm. i still told myself no because you cannot convince me that being of a certain size and i'm talking especially the what what the fuck is body positive i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just heard what you said. Babe, those Western terminologies, don't bring them in my podcast. <laughs> they have no place here. I don't care about body positivity. That means not, that's that's validation. That's what you're we have to validate everyone and their mother under the sun. <laughs> not on this show. <laughs> Never. I will go to my grave not validating everyone. Because I don't want to be validated. Don't validate me. If mm. you know, even my dad, when I and I was wearing really baggy pants and a baggy hoodie after I had like recently gained the weight and I went and I knew I gained weight and I went to him and I was like do I look okay and he looked at me with the bitchiest look I'm sorry dad (laughs) and he just went almost good enough to hide the obesity baba (laughs) but honestly good on you good on you why would he validate that I'm that Mm. why 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 Mm. babe honestly let's say he was body positive baby girl and it's okay you just gained 15 kilos you look cute as a little thimble okay what does that do for me absolutely nothing no not nothing causes harm fair i gained the weight because i was depressed and i was going through a hard time Mm. and i had no self-control and i had no mental discipline and you want him to come validate that that is that's insanity that's madness wait just um a little what do they call it uh insider like no 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 insert no. Well, yeah yeah insert a trigger warning or <laughs> or that thing okay this has nothing to do with people for example who have lupus or mental or if, excuse me physical issues that cause weight gain like thyroid and whatever not talking about y'all mm. okay well well no don't go into something i have to cut out you waste my time i pay money for this <laughs> 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 the way you just can't work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to validate it is wrong mm. and to go after those who have it and attack them and abuse them and make them feel bad is also wrong it's just yeah it's just do not do not call it normal yes mm. so i'm not gonna go in the street and see someone who's overweight and be like shame like that game of thrones girly with her with her bell and just scream shame like and throw food at th- that's not like that's madness and also that goes against my religion and my morals and my ethics mm. and everything you know but if you want to come out especially on covers of magazines and and um and and in my face all the time with pop culture and whatever and that from the west is very much creeping into this side of the world mm-hmm. and it's you want me not only to say it's normal you want me to applaud it you want me to celebrate it you know and here's where azidak min al i want you to truly honestly give me an honest answer most of those people in the people in the comments saying yes brava brava girly you're doing so well would never willingly step into her body you know, absolutely. Oh. The, the thing is, never. This excuse never, never. that it's genetic and this excuse that it it it's beyond your. 
just look into those photos and reels from the 30s and 40s of last century and tell me how many of these people passing by. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't, wasn't a, a thing. thing. It's the food. It's a, Baba, don't, please. I'm trying to, Daddy, I'm trying to stay in this country. <laughs> I'm not, I'm trying to just educate people uh, in a different way. Once yeah. they, they, you know? It is. It's the hormones and the food. It's mm. the lifestyles. It's everything. I agree. I agree. Mm. I agree because there's proof. It's not a subjective agreement. It's an objective. This is such as the case, you know, but they want to tell you all these excuses anyway. But, but yeah. then do you want to like, so wait, but you're, I'm not going to go into that, but your initial thing was so that little thing. And if they see the, the, mm. if you're triggered that I called someone fat, that's your problem. Go settle it. Which means resolve it between you and yourself at home. Fair. If you call someone ugly, why would that trigger me? If you call someone poor, why would that trigger me? If you call someone rich, why would that trigger me? If you call someone beautiful, why would that trigger me? If someone okay. is fat, it has nothing to do with feelings. They're fat. <laughs> Fair. I'm 164 centimeters. It has nothing to do with my feelings. I'm 164 centimeters. Wait, mm. Am I losing my mind? Am I the only? <laughs> am I making sense? No, you are. You are. But, but I think... It's about like different sensitivities of people, right? Oh, I don't care about people's sensitivities. Yeah. I've made this abundantly clear. It's actually one of the most overrated concepts. <laughs> people's sensitivities? What do you... Okay, no, no, no. Did you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met, Is this the first time you're meeting me? <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm extending the conversation. <laughs> I'm adding fuel. I understand. But mm. that's my point. I don't like to go into these things because my stance is clear. Do mm. not overvalidate. Do not agree with everything because everyone needs to have their safe space. What do you mean? By that logic, serial killers need to have their safe space. Because their trauma led to something. You know, where, where do you draw the line? They'll tell mm. you, no, the, the line is drawn. Obviously, we don't mean serial killers. No, but, but you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Am I making sense? I feel like I feel like I'm the only one right now <laughs> no, 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 no. who See, understands this. Not from you guys, just in general. When I say this, people kind of go like, "No, but, but what?" Because most of those concepts, if if not all of them, are created to support bad, not to support. Mm. I agree, and also I think this circles us back to the art of saying no, validating everyone and their emotions. We spoke about this. But yeah, yeah, but you have to learn to say no. The art of saying no, it falls under so many things. This is how society loses its way. Honestly, this is that we say yes to everything. We say yes to... I read a quote. I, I actually really want to, to read this one. I wrote it down. Okay, I think it was a quote by Atticus, and this went viral on Pinterest and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I read it recently after years of not reading it. We drink the poison, our minds pour for us, and wonder why we feel so sick. <gasps> so we validate. Say that again, I want to write that. Honestly, okay? We drink the poison, our minds pour for us, and wonder why we feel so sick. And I really thought about it for the first time in a very long time. And I think it is the most egotistical thing in the world to validate all of your thoughts as if you are a god, as if every thought you have has merit and has value and deserve weight. That's insanity. It is actually It insanity. is madness. Why would, why would I validate all of your thoughts and feelings, let alone validate all my thoughts and feelings? That's madness. That's throw you in the loony bin. That makes no sense to me. And mo- just look at society. Look at everything that it has bred. We are more lost than we have ever been before. And y'all have the audacity to tell me, no, we're the most self-aware generation. You are the most self-deluded generation that has validated the poison that your minds has poured into you. I rest my case. I love that. I rest my case. Because going back to that Ranwa cycling and the termites, she, when she was saying the story, you could see how humbled she was. You could see the, the humility in her eyes in the way she narrati- narrated it, sorry, in the way she goes about her days now, you know? And then, <laughs> and then people want to tell me I'm traumatized by my boss. I just... No, I won't validate you. And if you're looking for validation, you're at the wrong podcast. Mm. 